I love Doris Day. I've said it before. I'm sure I'll say it many times again. But I've only loved her for about a year, maybe a year and a half. So I'm still buying some of her albums and getting used to different songs that she's sung. I did buy and also discuss her 100 greatest hits or, you know, 100 top songs that she did. And that gave me quite a selection, but I was really pleasantly surprised to find The Magic of Doris Day. Uh, It had some songs on there that weren't on that 100 list, and one song in particular made me buy this album. It's one of my all-time favourite songs, and I will mention that, of course, in a moment. So I'll just, as I do with the previous ones, I'll just go through every song. Some of them I have very little thoughts on, I just find they're alright. Some of them I really love. And I've got some facts and things to share as well, in case you're not familiar with songs. But I will say, the other reason why I bought this particular album next was because it's pink. The cover design is absolutely beautiful. It's such a shallow reason to choose one. But that was, it was one of the two reasons. The other one was my favourite song. So, in order, it starts with Que Sera, Sera Of course it does. It's, you know, a song that she just made so famous, so beautifully. Nobody sings that like Doris Day does. And she sang this in several films, primarily The Man Who Knew Too Much, which is an absolutely brilliant film. Definitely check it out. I feel like this film, this song is on pretty much all of her albums. Certainly compilations that have been created since she kind of gave up singing professionally. It's a great song, a great way to start the album. The second one is Perhaps, Perhaps, Perhaps... The Spanish version is, I can't pronounce it, I'm not even going to try and pronounce this, but it's Q-U-I-Z-A-S. You'll know the Spanish version if you hear it. This was recorded in 1964 for Columbia Records and actually released on Doris Day's album Latin for Lovers, which I'm very keen to get my hands on because that does sound really great. I, I like how upbeat it is and entertaining you know que sera sera is quite gentle and then we launch into perhaps 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 and I just think it's brilliant fun the next one is move over darling which I just I hear the name move over darling and instantly my brain begins to sing this song it's very addictive I love the harmonies um No, it really feels like a song of the 60s. It was uh, initially released, recorded in 1963 for the film of the same name. Great film. Uh, It's a real toe-tapper, easy to sway to it. Love it. The next one, number four, I have an odd relationship with. Pillow Talk is a song that I first heard on that previous album that I mentioned before I saw the film with Rock Hudson, the 1959 film she did with Hudson. And once I saw the film and kind of saw her singing in it and had some more context, I liked it. Now I do really enjoy it, but I don't like the final few seconds. I think the last few seconds of this really ruin it. Because it is otherwise quite a nice song. It's fun. Better once you've seen the film. Teacher's Pet. I love Teacher's Pet. The vocals are gorgeous. They are so beautiful. This was actually originally sung by Doris Day in the 1958 film of the same name, of course. It's got a good steady rhythm, another swaying, toe-tapping song that I cannot get enough of. The next one is interesting. This is Bewitched, Bothered and Bewildered, which I quite like. I really enjoy. Sometimes I would listen to it and think this is great. Sometimes I will skip it if I'm kind of going through the album. This is actually originally from the 1940s, um, the 1940 musical Pal Joey, written by Rogers and Hart. I haven't heard of that musical. I will look out for it. This version was sung by Doris Day and the Mellow Men in 1949. There's nothing about this that I particularly love, but sometimes I think it's quite catchy. I guess it depends on what mood I'm in. Number seven is When I Fall in Love. Very popular song. Uh, Her version was actually the first ever hit version of this song uh, from 1952. It reached number 20 in the billboards, which is no mean feat. Exquisite. Beautiful recording. There are a lot of people who have sung this song. It may be my favourite. The next one, It's Magic, is definitely the most gentle of the songs so far. Very sombre. We have some lovely violins. She's she's got such a gentle voice. Everything in this kind of blends very well together. The song was actually written for Doris Day for her film debut, Romance on the High Seas. Apparently, 
the film itself was actually released in the UK under the title It's Magic. Um, I wasn't actually aware of that. I did watch it under the name Romance on the High Seas. And it's, it's, it's nice. It's very gentle. Not my favourite of hers, but still decent enough. The next one, Lullaby of Broadway, is a lot funkier than I would have expected for a song that's got lullaby in the title. Very upbeat, pretty good fun. She starred in the film in 1951, the film of the same name. Not my favourite, but pretty decent. The next three I'm going to lump together. Secret Love, Deadwood Stage, Black Hills of Dakota. Three songs from my favourite Doris Day film, Calamity Jane. Secret Love is so powerful. Deadwood Stage is incredibly addictive and Black Hills of Dakota is so beautiful. I'm not going to say too much about them because I did talk about them at length in my 100 hits of Doris Day um, discussion. But I absolutely love them. And then we come to a a very precious love, which is very mellow and soothing. It's not one I'm in the mood for that often. But when I am, it, it, it hits the spot. It was originally sung by um, Jean Kelly in Marjorie Morningstar, 1958 film. Um, or it, at least it, that's kind of the, where it was popularised, but Doris Day had actually recorded it the previous year in 1957 and charted at number 16 in the UK, which I think is um, obviously pretty great. The next one I always forget. This is Everybody Loves a Lover. And whenever I see it next on the track list, I'm like, I can't, I can't hear it in my head. What's coming up? I always forget how upbeat it is. This is a 1958 recording. Um, very entertaining and uplifting. I love her vocals. My favourite bit, when you hear the strength in her voice when she sings the lyrics, having a ball, guess you might call me Pollyanna. That bit, I just, I love, I love the music behind it. It's just, it's brilliant. Love me or leave me. You may be well aware of the film that she did under the same name. If you've seen it, I'm sure you'll be familiar with this song. This one was originally in the Broadway musical Whoopi from 1928. And that was originally sung by Ruth Etting. And the 1955 biographical film about Ruth Etting's life has the same name. Um, Doris Day plays Ruth Etting. And this song actually became a hit for Doris Day as well. So I think everything kind of ties up nicely. The song is fine. I like it. It's never going to be one of my favourites. The next one I know is a very popular song and is something a lot of people love and this is Fly Me to the Moon. This one was originally in 1954. Many people have sang it since. Um, Oddly I can't find anything about Doris Day singing it when hers was recorded or you know any if hers charted at all, I, I can't find anything, which is very odd. Um, but her version, she sings it with Mort Garson and orchestra. Obviously, it's beautiful. It's a good song. I just don't hold it in such a high regard as others, as I know it's a very popular song with a lot of people. The same with the next one, Dream a Little Dream of Me. This is a song that I've loved for a long time. It was actually originally written and recorded by somebody in 1931. I forgot to write down the name of that person. This one, Doris Day's version, is probably my, my favourite version of them all. I've heard a lot of them. I think she just hits the notes in all of the right ways. Her voice is strong yet gentle. It's, it's beautiful. I really cannot fault her version of this one. The next one is Close Your Eyes. This was originally a 1933 song. Doris Day recorded it in 1957. I like the strumming. I, it's quite different to the rest of the album. Not my favourite song, but, you know, quite fun, very funky. Um, something a little bit more upbeat in between Dream a Little Dream and the next song, which is the one that forced me to buy this album, You'll Never Walk Alone. This is probably my second favourite song and of all time. And to hear Doris Day singing it is a treat above every other treat. It is gorgeous. If you're not familiar with the song, it was originally um, written in 1962 for Rodgers and Hammerstein's Carousel. Uh, great musical, great, beautiful, perfect song. Uh, Doris Day actually released an album called You'll Never Walk Alone with that song on it. I haven't got that album yet. It might be the next one I get. Looking forward to it. 
it's a beautiful recording it's exquisite and i just wish it was the last one on the album because that would be such a beautiful way to end the album third from the last we have sentimental journey which is a really interesting title actually because this was her first ever number one hit in 1945 with les brown and his band of renown it's sentimental you know it's a really great word for it um I do find there's a lot more instrumental than there is vocal, though, which is a shame because I like to listen to her voice. I love her. I just love her voice so much. So I wish there was less instrumental, more Doris Day. But it's really great. The fact that she was 23 at the time, maybe even younger at the time of recording, is just... You can kind of hear the youthfulness in her voice. I don't know if that's just, like, psychological because I know she was younger, so I can hear her being younger, but... It's it's really a very beautiful one to listen to. Penultimate, this one blew me away. This is, it's called Medley, and it's Secret Love, Who Will Buy, and 59th Street Bridge Song. And as soon as it started playing, I my mind just kind of went, wow. It starts with such a powerful push, and it's very lively, and the three songs are blended together beautifully. Secret Love is one of my favourite songs that she sings full stop, Obviously, starting with that bit of powerful Calamity Jane. It's also a lot more um, powerful. This this version of Secret Love is a lot more powerful than the recording of Secret Love. It's um, I think it's got a bit more pacing to it. It's a bit, I want to say a bit louder. I don't know if that makes any sense. Um, it's not as gentle. But I like that it works really well. And lastly, is another another song that I just absolutely love. And this is the way we were very very popular song one that many many people have sang over the years and this one is actually quite special because as far as my research tells me this is the last time she sung professionally in public for an well a television audience this was in 1975 for the tv special doris day today on cbs and you can see the clip on YouTube. It's it's all over the internet. It's it's beautiful. She sings it so exquisitely, and it's hard to slightly well enough. It's hard to not watch that clip and not get emotional because it's beautiful. Her vocals are stunning, and and to think that that's kind of like the last time she sang publicly, to the best of my research, is just stunning. And then she went on to live another fifty. 45 years or something maths off the top of my head isn't great uh 2019 she's she's exquisite this album is absolutely beautiful there are some really great songs on here there are some that i can take or leave none that i don't like at all if you're looking for a doris day album i'd say the magic of doris day is a pretty magical choice